she has to do uh, a lot in terms of uh, doing photographies and we also cannot uh, what about stuff and we have to take a lot of consideration for video as well so uh, in the journey to do that we realized that there's a few steps are uh, very important that for us to actually make it a reality so for a start right actually you need to look at the uh, processing of the uh, cameras itself so this is the first step to get uh, good cameras so right now Nikon is actually having its own uh, processors which we call an XPIC uh, here we need to make sure that this engine actually is ready for the next generation kind of uh, image processing it needs to do a lot of uh, good details good colors as realistic as possible then at the same time actually consume the, the lowest battery as much as possible delivering the results that you wanted uh, the cameras to do that's what uh, we have actually uh, creating the uh, new uh, engine itself then of course we also have to take a look on the uh, image sensor which will be responsible to capture the data uh, the sceneries that you are shooting the humans the portraits that you are looking at how this can translate into digital data so the processors can actually process it and deliver the finished product so right now we need to make sure that this is as fast as possible because things happen in a very fast times and uh, and very often says uh, once it's passed you cannot redo this anymore then of course um, we also take a, a deep look into speeds traditionally when we look at speed we are only looking at uh, how much of a frame rate you can capture it could be 3 frames per second 5 frames per second 10 frames per second but over the years these are actually moved up beyond that today we are not just looking at high capture rate we are also looking at how fast you can actually deliver your photo so right from the cameras the cameras capture as fast as possible the data processor actually process it with photo and video then after that how fast can you deliver it out to your clients because this is definitely a professional tool how fast can helps you to actually ensure that your business actually goes on as soon as possible that's what we look at the speed then of course we also look at um, how the minimum uh, effort you need to get a great result so coming from Nikon you will be beneficial from all the uh, Nikon color science uh, you will get uh, good white balance this and that and uh, very often our cameras with very minimal processing you can actually use the images or the video directly so that's what we are looking at uh, in, uh, together with the speeds as well then of course it has to do all kinds of uh, uh, other things as well so the, one of the things that uh, we're looking at is how comfortable uh, can you use it for a long period of time so the, these will be tools that allows you to actually go on shootings hours and hours and only even days and weeks so the, we're looking at um, a very nice comfort very bright viewfinder so as uh, realistic as possible at the same time don't uh, what call it, uh, strain the eyesight too much because this is an electronic viewfinder so very often there's uh, manufacturers We'll try different ways to make sure that you can use it for a long period of time. Then, of course, uh, the autofocus has been uh, completely upgraded. Coming from Z9, we already have a very powerful uh, AI, the uh, uh, deep learning assisted uh, autofocus. Right now, it's even better. You can actually get uh, more detection, including the new dedicated uh, airplane mode as well. So, that's what we're looking at how uh, we can actually move uh, even more. Then, of course, uh, everything else. We also have to consider uh, for video as well. So uh, these cameras will also be one of the first uh, small size portable mirrorless cameras that actually do it all. You can actually have a very powerful features for photo. You can also have a very powerful features for video as well. Then uh, of course, this is where we are coming from. So the, with the introduction of the Z9 and the D850 previously, so we introduced to use the latest uh, brothers to it which is the smallest among the three it's about 30% smaller uh, than the Z9 and 15% smaller than even the A50 itself so the, right now it's actually the lightest as well it's a 910 gram with the memory cards and the battery inserted into it so this will be something uh, very interesting not too light, not too heavy at the same time retain all the professional features and comfortable to use for a long period of time so of course, uh, with a lot of things that uh, you look at the video just now, right? A lot of technologies actually coming from the Xena itself. That's true. So for for the start, right? Actually, it has the same uh, seventh generation XP, which I explained to you just now. This is the main brain of the cameras itself. So this will be responsible to actually uh, make sure your data, everything, are processed as soon as possible when they're captured uh, by the uh, image sensor. 
Then you still have the uh, stack sensors as well. So these sensors will ensure you that uh, it's uh, capturing at the fastest speeds. Right now, amongst the high resolution sensor, this is actually the fastest out there, which also means that there's a lot of things that we can do um, to it, uh, in, the, in terms of the design. You also have the same AF module from the Xena uh, itself. So with even enhanced algorithm, this and that, the AI inside is actually slightly smarter than the Xena at of now. Then of course, they do very interesting video. This is also one of the first uh, very small cameras that uh, you can shoot all the way up to 60p for 8K. And uh, the more common resolution in 4K, you can do all the way up to 120p as well. Of course, you can have all others resolution that was not listed yet. So these are the two most common uh, resolution and frame rates that you'll be looking at. And all these things in a very small and uh, lighter package. So that's how we look at this uh, camera for a start. And also, uh, a little bit on the XPeed 7 generation itself, this is the same sensor that was used in the, uh, the Z9 itself. To give you some uh, context, this is actually 30 times faster than even the Z7 II. The viewfinder, which was nicely designed uh, on top of the cameras, at a very fast uh, refresh rate of 120 frames per second. So everything you see up there will be very smooth, no blackout, and truly no distortion, uh, no lag or no whatever, unlike uh, some of the models out there where you have, you have some blackout, for example, you can also have some distortion, uh, resize of re uh, resolution, this is it. So this will be a constant, uh, full safe, uh, safe resolution throughout and uh, up to 120 frames. You will also see that uh, because we're having the, uh, the faster sensors uh, is not inside it right now, so one of the first uh, benefit you get from it is actually you can actually take away the uh, mechanical shuttle. So these cameras will be the second one from uh, Nikon. The first one was the Z9. The second one was the Z8 that's uh, designed without a mechanical shuttle. So by taking away mechanical shuttle, the first thing you gain is actually it can be truly silent. It can be completely silent. So because there's no mechanical part, uh, moving so technically even you use the cameras for a long time you use it to shoot a lot of things the camera shoot at a very fast speed right you can do thousands of shots a uh, hundred thousand of shots that there's no need to worry about the wear and tear so practically you don't have a shutter you need to break anymore unlike the traditional cameras where you have a mechanical shutter so that's the first benefit you get of course Having it completely electronic, sometimes you will actually be uh, worried about uh, the distortion, uh, rolling shutter, this and that, right? But because this is the fastest uh, order of sensors in the market right now, the chances that you have that situation is actually the least as well, the lowest uh, occurrence. So even if that rare scenario happens, there's many different uh, countermeasures introduced by Nikon, even to the Z9 as well, you can actually have it, uh, like for example, the high frequency flickering uh, reduction, you can actually help you to have uh, different shutter speed to match the uh, flickering lights as well. So there's different countermeasures for different scenarios that may happen, even though they are red. So for this, right, you can also gain, uh, because it's electronic, you can also have a very high speed shutter. So for example, you can go all the way up to 1.32,000. Uh, this is very important because right now we have a lot of large aperture lenses. Not so uh, crucial in the past because uh, all uh, the lenses are generally uh, in a, with a smaller uh, aperture in the past. But right now you have 1.2, you have 0 0.95, and we know that traditionally these lenses are commonly used under low light. But today's, the creative scenes have changed. A lot of photographers, a lot of videographers prefer shooting wide open under the hot sun, right? Noon time, uh, large aperture, you've got beautiful bokeh, nice portrait, this and that. That's the scenario where you need a high shutter speed before you are restricted to putting additional uh, ND filter to it. So that's where we're looking at. Then of course, um, in the low light scenario, when you want to go very slow, the cameras also allows you to go very slow shutter as well. So the longest it can go without adding any additional uh, accessories is actually 900 seconds which is equivalent to 15 minutes by the camera itself. So it can go very fast, it can go very low uh, where the situation change. Then of course, uh, just now we mentioned that uh, this is actually, a, it's still a Nikon camera as well. You will actually inherit all the uh, Nikon DNA. So one of the more important ones is the accuracy of the uh, white balance, the re uh, color rendering, this and that has all the uh, characteristics of the Nikon color science. So we look at it like uh, how true colors you can get straight out of the cameras. 
So of course, you want to further enhance it, there's a specific of you to shoot, it's perfectly normal. But we are talking about how fast, how easy it is to get this kind of true tone. Then after that, what kind of uh, uh, new features or modernized features that we can add to the cameras uh, to even uh, to allow us to even go further without much uh, effort. This is the things that we're looking at. And um, we also take a look from the autofocus. Similar to the Z9, you can actually uh, have the uh, auto detection of subjects, up to nine categories of them. So right here, a lot of them uh, should be very familiar with, uh, I think most of you are out here. So for example, the, these cameras will actually auto detect and uh, I, uh, what else, uh, detect and select uh, human subjects. Human subjects can also be further uh, separated into uh, faces, uh, even eye, or even the torso itself. So the camera is actually smart enough to switch between all these three and uh, it can detect as soon as the person enter the frame as far away as uh, it's only uh, required 3% to be uh, relevant to the frame size so this is right now the cameras that detect faces in the um, the first to detect faces among the competitors also so it's actually even faster than the, uh, the Z9 uh, in general so the imagine today is like we are in this hall right so you are shooting uh, someone coming in from the, the main door as a wedding photographer, for example, the cameras will immediately see the couples coming in. As far as possible, it will auto select the uh, faces, then a bit more, then it actually selects the eyes as well. So, this will allow you to actually shoot uh, select faster, making the whole uh, workflow even faster for this kind of uh, tough scenario. And of course, the autofocus selection does not uh, stop at the uh, human subject. You will also do uh, our uh, follows with the um, animals as well. Commonly, cats, dogs, or even the uh, wild safaris animals, uh, even birds, these and they are all covered. They can be further detected into eyes as well, or even the whole body. Then, of course, you will also track all kinds of vehicles. So, traditionally, car, motorbike, uh, bicycle, train. And uh, right now, we have a dedicated mode, it's a new one, which is a Airplane. So airplane is very interesting, is, uh, even though it's not very popular, uh, aviation photography is not very popular in Malaysia, but uh, in some places that uh, there's a lot of uh, large group of uh, professional photographers, they actually shoot all kinds of airplane. Okay, right now, what Malaysian can do is uh, in Langkawi, the air show is happening right now, so you can actually uh, enjoy this uh, mode very much. So very different from Z9. So Z9, when you see airplane, you will detect, you will recognize airplane as a uh, vehicle. But it's only limited to the front side, so you can only uh, you will only recognize the aeroplane from the front. So if today you are shooting from the side, from the back, or any angle, you are higher than the aeroplane or lower than the aeroplane, the Z8 will also select as well. So it has actually improved quite a lot, even to these uh, small details for aeroplane. So this is how uh, we look at it, and it's not limited to just um, aeroplanes. Actually, helicopters were also covered as well, uh, including drone, this and that. So it has a very vast um, database inside the new uh, detection. So that's how we look at it. And of course, the popular 3D tracking, this and that, are all still here. And uh, because of the coverage of the auto uh, focus area, you can actually make use of that uh, together with the subject detection. This is some of, uh, one of the modes that is very interesting. It's, uh, it, it started from the uh, D6 uh, era, where you can actually customize the box. Traditionally, you are limited to the sizes of the box. It's either square or slightly longer rectangular. So that's a, a very basic uh, selection from most of the cameras. But today, we are looking at, you can actually customize uh, the longer rectangle, shorter rectangle, whether it's a, it's a straight down, or horizontal this and that, uh, you can also choose uh, up to different uh, 20 different uh, uh, combination. Once you have decided on your shapes, you can actually move them across the frame. You can have two different sizes safe inside the cameras. You can actually record them anytime if you want. You can also use it for both photo and video. So it's a very flexible autofocus system that you can actually use it for all kinds of our scenario. So for example, um, under this scenario, right, these are very typical uh, races. You can actually dedicate the cameras or I mean, uh, to, it instructs the cameras that I only want to consider this area where I indicated on the uh, what about the example above. Uh, together with the subject detection, you will actually select any faces or eye within the red box. So that's uh, how intelligent the cameras can go today, and it actually. Uh, will help you to achieve your outcome a lot faster and easier.
So of course, um, the cameras go beyond that. So typically, most of the photographers or most of us that we like to shoot a beautiful landscape, silhouette, kind of like this. But that's the worst scenario for cameras because everything is so dark, right? So in this scenario, you will, you will actually notice or observe that uh, sometimes the cameras struggle to focus. So the Z9, the Z is actually a lot smaller than it. When they see this kind of scenario, you will actually internally, you will actually boost it up where you will see it from like this. This is what the camera see. This is what we see. Okay, what the photographer see. So the cameras actually switch between the two without you even noticing. But uh, we talk a lot about the videography side. So for this video, uh, this camera, the cameras, uh, the Z Rx actually inherited a lot of interesting features from the Big Brothers, the Z9. So particularly, the, for example, uh, it can allow you to actually choose different, different uh, resolution and frame rate. So the, in short, you can shoot. You can actually shoot a, a very common uh, 1080p all the way from 30 frames, uh, 34 frames to 120 frames. You can also shoot the now uh, popular 4K, 24 frames to 120 frames. And if you need the high resolution work, you can actually go with 8K as well. So internally, you will shoot 8K uh, 30p for the normal video. You can also shoot 8K 60p with the raw video. So of course you can choose uh, whichever that's uh, is uh, suitable for your assignment this and that. So it will actually allow you to shoot from a very simple video all the way to a high-end uh, production. So the camera is ready for that. And of course, uh, looking at this, there's different categories or uh, levels or, or requirement from each of the different production team or even an individual videographer this and that. So Nikon offer the most comprehensive uh, modes that's for video. So starting from very simple, uh, it can be completely auto. So this will be very useful if you needed uh, something quick. Uh, you want it to use for live stream. You want to use it for like short video, uh, TikToks, uh, maybe the, what I call it, some Facebook, YouTube, this and that. This will actually be very easy because this will allow you to have all the Nikon color size inside. So you just need to decide what you want to shoot. The video files will be very straightforward and the colors and everything will be very consistent and very nice. It's having a, such a high resolution sensor, right? It's 45 megapixels, right? How do we make the most out of it? Because uh, as, as far as you know, most of the time we are not shooting 8K every day, right? So the, in most scenarios, we'll be shooting 4K. So there will be some uh, small, small add, uh, what about, uh, additional features that we can add into it to help getting a, a better 4K images because we have a, a larger high-res sensor, which is the, the 45 meg sensor right now. So uh, some example would be we have introduced uh, a feature called uh, the high-res zoom. So this high-res zoom is basically allowing you to zoom into your subject up to two times uh, without sacrificing details. You can even control the speed of the zoom, uh, slower for the cinematic view, or higher speed for action shots or something like that. So imagine today you are using a 50mm prime lens, for example. So you are shooting halfway that uh, you needed the extra reach. So these features will allow you to actually uh, zoom in without uh, sacrificing, uh, sacrificing the details all the way up to 4K uh, resolution. So of course you can do a lot more than that. Uh, the camera shoots maximum up to 8.3K. You can use it to crop even to uh, DCI uh, standards or comply to the uh, common UHD standard that is uh, more ready for most of the TV screen out there. And of course, each of the uh, screen if you shoot in 8K, each of uh, the frame itself is actually 33 megapixel. You can extract them out and uh, you shouldn't have any big issue for printing the screen capture. Because uh, so, or additional so small features that here and there to help uh, making the whole video shootings better. So you get, uh, to get a much better the exposure, you can actually uh, check out the zebra stripes. Uh, previously, the name as the, uh, the highlight picking. So right now it has been improved. Uh, with more customization, you can show highlights, you can actually show the uh, mid-tone as well. So depending on, depending on your needs, you can actually change it. You also have imp uh, incorporated some waveform. You can actually use it uh, just like how you use a histogram for still photo. And of course, uh, we also introduce something new, such as the linear focus, which is very important for modern lenses, that's, uh, especially electronic lenses. So this will reduce the uh, latency between the lenses and the uh, video. At the same time, allows you to decide how much of a rotation you want before the lens changes its focus. So this, we are talking about very, very precise control uh, over the lens. And of course, there are a lot more uh, things that you can see over the, the screen here. Afterwards, um, 
yeah. when you have the opportunity to try it on the cameras, do check that out. If you need uh, further information, uh, feel free to approach me or some of my colleagues out there. And of course, um, we also do a much better audio recording now. It's no longer uh, with the 16 bits, now it's 24 bits and uh, it will record much bigger dynamic range. Uh, very useful, especially for event videographers or video uh, wedding videographers, this and that, because you cannot control how loud the audience will be or how soft they will be. So this will be something very useful. Uh, we have also tested uh, the cameras in different scenarios. So you can look at these models uh, as a modular system. It can go as simple as uh, just the camera itself. Uh, when time leaders, you can also add the uh, battery grips of the vertical packs. So the vertical packs will also be able to go uh, soon. Then of course, you can also use it with all kinds of uh, gimbal, this and that. And beyond that, there's actually a big uh, ecosystem that you can actually uh, consider and use the cameras with. So this is how we look at the modular system. So coming from Nikon, right, we have tested a range of uh, accessories that's commonly used by uh, videographers in the market. So for example, right, uh, you have uh, you probably will see a lot of gimbal, uh, which is very popular now so to get a much better uh, uh, dynamic shots that you can actually uh, uh, obtain. Then of course you can uh, use all kinds of microphone that you want. You can also use, uh, for example, a transmitter, HDMI transmitter, where you can have uh, the video uh, playbacks on a big screen, far away from you without the cables. And of course, we have more than that. We also introduced, uh, recently, we also introduced the MC N10, uh, which is a, a very nice uh, a vertical grip that is uh, connected by cables. You imagine you can remote control your camera uh, for videos without touching the cameras, uh, which usually generates uh, or introduce some uh, movement to it. Then of course, uh, there are lots more uh, accessories that is uh, being tested and uh, we actually uh, partner up with uh, one of the accessory sellers that uh, they are demonstrating some uh, accessories uh, in the event as well. Then of course, uh, uh, image uh, quality. So right now, over the years, we already know that megapixel is not everything anymore. So right now, we look at the quality of each of the pixels and the color rendering this and that and also have to put into consideration uh, because we are in the era uh, transitioning from traditional print to a modern screen. So uh, the uh, screen display has come a long way right now. You will see a lot of uh, new screen being introduced day by day. So how do we make use of all these new technologies this and that? And coming from Nikon, uh, we are using the, the latest generation of the stack sensor which is a backside innovation as well. Uh, these are actually stacks for speed. So with the speeds, you can actually capture a lot of pictures, right? So each of the pictures, we also have to consider the uh, storage size. So that's why we introduced a high efficiency the RAW previously in Z9, which will be inherited here as well. At the same time, we introduced another new thing, which is what we call the, uh, what do you call it? A 10 bit uh, HEIF formats, the high efficiency image formats. Uh, that was first uh, introduced a few years ago so uh, by Apple. So right now, this new uh, image format, right, actually is a very interesting uh, for many of the landscape photographers or even the portrait photographers out there because it's no longer 8-bit just like how your JPEG behave, right? So the first thing is that uh, this is also the first uh, professional cameras that has this uh, new feature called portrait impressions uh, balance. First introduced in the Z6, then uh, recently introduced to the D850 as well. So right now it's inherited or uh, uh, implemented into the Z8. This will actually allow us, especially from Asian, right, where we, are, we have a skin tone, uh, uh, variety of skin tone, a uh, diversified skin tone. So this will allow you to actually fine tune. So you can, for example, make it brighter, make it fairer or darker for whatever reason. Typically, mobile phone has made this like uh, popular features, like especially amongst the uh, ladies, right? So you like to have a very nice compression, this and that. So this is also the first time these kind of features appear in a professional uh, camera. But we know we have to do more than just softening the screen. So traditionally or, or typically for mobile phone, when you activate these features, there's a limitation on how many person you can actually uh, select or correct in your uh, phone. So commonly it's one person because it's expected you to do a selfie. So you, you, you get a very nice uh, work access, a compression this and that. But uh, you also did not, uh, you will actually apply uh, the correction to the whole pictures itself. So everything else is looks uh, as soft as uh, it is. So uh, it's not very convincing when it comes to uh, the high-end uh, work access uh, flagship cameras, right? Put it together, especially for the uh, landscape level. 
So we know that uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, landscape shooters out there that uh, uses Nikon, for example. And of course, uh, very often or very, very high chances that you may be shooting something like this, right? Uh, going for Milky Way, uh, going for Aurora shootings or something, uh, constellation, where the scenario is usually dark or very, very dark that you can't even see your camera this and that. So there's a series of small uh, features that actually helps making this whole uh, shooting experience much faster. You can choose between the 30 frame, 60 frame, 120 frame. So each of them has uh, different use and of course they have their different restrictions uh, as well. So 30 frame is uh, limited to JPEG. Uh, you have the full resolution. 60 frame is basically the uh, DX crop, so you get extended uh, reach. Then 120 frame is basically the fastest you can go and a slightly reduced uh, resolution. So this will allow you to actually choose uh, depending on your needs and the uh, requirement. So if you focus shape, uh, from the wedding guy, you probably do multi exposure like this, or even for sports, you can actually do a motion blur, uh, motion blend, uh, this and that. You can also have various filters here and there. Uh, here, uh, coming from Nikon, we have a comprehensive uh, what about, uh, features uh, for time lapse. Uh, you can even export 8K uh, HDR time lapse straight from the cameras right now. So that's how fast the processor can be. All this material is actually made with the uh, uh, combination of uh, carbon fiber and the uh, what about the uh, magnesium alloy. So it's uh, completely dust and drip resistant. All this yellow line you see is actually the, uh, the opening that's usually uh, gasket that, that's pre, uh, pre, uh, what about, uh, uh, ready for you to use in others uh, harsh scenario like this. So uh, you can also have the uh, what about the uh, double slots. Uh, it actually takes a CFX or XQD card on slot one. You also take the SD cards on the uh, slot two as well. So you can have uh, various uh, combination uh, for your usage. Just be careful that. Uh, the, uh, the faster task you put into it, you will actually uh, unrestrict the cameras more. If you put a very slow SD card to it, uh, the cameras will actually be limited to that. Yeah? Then of course, uh, you will see that the very different here is that you have two USB ports, which is the first time for Nikon. So this actually is, uh, is, is there to actually solve a lot of problems for studio guys. So typically, the studio guys, when you use a long cable, and in the past you shouldn't have a big problem because the camera don't draw power from your computers. Right now, most of the cameras also draw power from the cameras. So when you are drawing power and you are transmitting high speed data, there is very high chances that you will get this connection. The requirement for cable is a lot higher if you use a single port. So this will be the first uh, Nikon cameras that has double port. So one port dedicated for data, one port dedicated for charging or the power supply. And uh, this is also why we can actually uh, use uh, adapter like this, an uh, offshore adapter like this, to add on to the data terminals. You can actually use it to add, uh, what kind of add on to uh, network port, for example, to transfer the file even faster speeds. The, uh, the features presentation, this is a, a, what kind of stuff, a feature set that allows you to uh, get uh, a glance into it uh, in details. Uh, after that, uh, we will actually have uh, short videos for you to uh, play. Then I think we will almost time for us to go and uh, try out the cameras, right? Can we have the video right now?